Whether you've been dating for a while or you're just getting started, navigating relationships can be a bit tricky at times. Yeah, joining us to continue the conversation is dating coach and founder and CEO of Date Brazen, Lily Wombo. Lily, good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. So you're also the author of an upcoming book, Thank You, More Please, A Feminist Guide to Breaking Dumb Dating Rules and Finding Love. So let's start with the Thank You, More Please Challenge. What is it and how can it help people get started in the dating game? Thank You, More Please is my viral challenge on social media that has taken millions from hopeless in their dating lives to hopeful. It is a scientifically backed way to build evidence that what you want exists. So to do the Thank You, More Please challenge, you acknowledge what you want in your dating life. You go out into the world looking for slivers of evidence that what you want exists. Maybe it's a cute, flirty conversation with your barista, or you see a cute human exiting a therapy office. When you see those slivers of evidence, say, thank you more please out loud so that your brain notices that there is evidence and you're going to start to see more of it. Mm, the power of releasing that information into the world yeah. and then you start to practice that, right? Manifest. So, manifest, yeah. So the, in, in a world of social media, you know, everybody's on social media these days, not really uncommon for people to feel envious and compare themselves to others based on what they see in photos and videos, that sort of thing. What is relationship FOMO and how can people get caught in a, a comparison spiral? Absolutely. So it's so hard when you want a relationship and your friend seems to have stumbled into one and then you see a post about their engagement on social media. While you're happy for your friend, there probably is some fear of missing out FOMO or some comparison that comes in. So to beat relationship comparison in its tracks because it's really just going to steal your joy away, I really encourage people to practice self-compassion. So acknowledge the feelings that you're having, be really kind to yourself, and get yourself in a community of people who understand you and who, who are going to lift you up. Be kind to yourself. I like that. I do too. So Lily, once you're in the relationship, obviously there's work. So how can someone identify when their relationship is toxic and also set healthy boundaries? Absolutely. As somebody who has been in toxic relationships before, it can be very difficult to acknowledge what you want and to set a boundary around what you want. So first, realizing that you get to want what you want. You don't have to be in a bad relationship to prove to yourself that you're worthy of one. You are worthy of the right relationship. So I recommend to know if you're in the right relationship or not, ask the deeper questions. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And then if that person is not aligning with your vision for your future, do a bless and release so that your dating time is available for the people who will be right for you. We know that dating apps and websites are, you know, they're, they're really popular right now. Um, my relationship that started five months ago today started on a dating app, that sort of thing. Why do you think dating yes, apps are, are kind of a scam and what other ways should people consider meeting instead? Dating apps are fundamentally difficult on our brains, bodies, and nervous systems. They were built like slot machines designed to addict us. And they can be a powerful resource to meet somebody amazing outside of your social circle. So to game the dating apps, to get ahead of how they might be trying to manipulate users, go in with eyes wide open and a plan. That's why I recommend one dating app, not three or five. That's why I recommend 20 minutes a day, then put your phone down, no notifications, and build a robust in-person dating life as well so that you're not relying on the dating app for everything. The dating app isn't the answer to finding love. It's just one tool. So get out in person, do the thank you more please challenge, and approach people messily. The right person is also looking for you. What do you think is kind of the best ways to meet people if you're looking to, to date or trying to find that relationship? Do you have any advice on some places that people should start outside of apps? Yes, I recommend two things. Number one, joy building. So going where brings you joy out in the world outside of your house. And when you're at that thing, a pottery class or a trampoline class, whatever, or a meetup, make new friends. The best way to meet someone new romantically is to expand your friendship circle and then ask people, do you have anybody you could set me up with? Mm. I also recommend thinking about where would my ideal person be going to have fun? And then grab a friend and go do that thing. And while you're there, it is imperative to make eye contact with new people, to approach new people, to say hello, and to start building new connections courageously. That's good advice. I like you that. You gotta be courageous, you gotta yeah. be bold.